I always find that the best way to read scripture is to plug yourself into the characters that you're reading about. So in the parable of the prodigal son, we have an older brother, we have the prodigal son, and we have the father. So we want to listen to that parable and take a look at where we could identify with those characters. I always saw myself as the prodigal son, right? You know, all the kind of growing up and living crazy. And yet, uh, I had a very inter interesting experience during Hurricane Sandy. My dad was living with myself. And he had fallen. And I could not get him up. And so I called my brother to come over. I said, listen, you got to come over and help me pick up daddy because I just can't pick him up. And immediately, he dropped what he was doing, and he came over, and he picked up his father. And as I saw that, I saw my brother, my father's son, pick up his dad. And I saw the look in my father's eye of his son. And it kind of hit me because I think I always used to think of, well, in my family, my older brother was adopted and then I was born and then we had my parents adopted two more uh, children, two more sisters. And so I was the natural child <clears throat> and I didn't realize it, but I probably always thought, oh, I probably have this natural connection with my father. And yet, when I saw that experience with my brother immediately coming over and picking up his dad, I was like, wow, my brother has a powerful and intimate relationship with his father. And my father, his father, had a powerful relationship with his son. That there was no difference, that my father loved me equally as much as he loved my older brother and in that moment I was put in my place and I kind of realized that I had been the older brother I had been a little bit judgmental and was not appreciating and realizing how much my dad loved my brother as much as he loved me and then we think of the prodigal son where the prodigal son does what right he he goes out, he goes to his father and asks for half of his inheritance. And you really want to appreciate that at that time, imagine even today going to your father and asking him for half of whatever is going to come to you when your father dies. Or imagine your child coming to you and saying, I don't really don't want to wait for you to die. I want half of what you have now. You can imagine what an unbelievable insult that would have been. Uh, essentially, back then, like the prodigal son asking for that inheritance, was essentially saying, I wish you were dead. I wish you were dead to his father. And yet the father, who loves as love does, has no other choice but to grant freedom and to grant his son what he wants. And so he gives him this money, and he goes off, and we know the story where he spends all of his money on wine, women, and song, and winds up broke. He has nothing. He's working for this uh, farmer, and he sees the husks that the pigs are eating, and he actually finds himself longing for the same food that the pigs are eating. And in that moment, he realizes that he wants to go back and ask his father for a job. I, I, I'm no longer allowed or should be seen as your son, but would you allow me to be a hired hand? And the father comes out and comes to the son before he even gets there. And says, you know, break out the Chateaubriand, break out the Cabernet, put a ring on his finger and shoes on his feet. My son who was lost is found. And this unbelievable love that the father has for the prodigal son. Now, the question is, where are you the prodigal son? 
Where do you go off into distant lands trying to find fulfillment, trying to find, you know, your happiness in something external to you, something that is outside, and you come up empty over and over again, trying to find your self-worth in things. You're never going to find yourself in things. You're never going to find yourself in something external or some possession. You're never going to find yourself in that. You know, this, this powerful, powerful message that the Father's love, that's what restores the prodigal son. So the question is, where are you the prodigal son? Where are you that person who's seeking something outside yourself and don't seek to go inside? Or the older brother, where you have a judgment, where you think you're better than other people, where you're cynical, where you want to hold on to a past grievance, where are you also the older brother? And then we have something so powerful here, and that is while we all typically can identify with the prodigal son or the older brother, we're also called to grow up, to mature, and to become like the father. The word prodigal means to be wasteful. Certainly the prodigal son wasted all of the father's and all of the inheritance money on frivolous things. He wasted everything. We also have another prodigal. We have the father who was wasteful in his love. The powerful, healing, life-giving love that the father has for his sons. And also let's be clear that as the story goes, the father also went out to the older brother. So the father loves the older son and he loves the prodigal son. He loves them equally. These are his children. And as the story is portraying itself, we need to be able to ask ourselves, am I allowing myself to be loved by the living God, the living God who is prodigal, who is wasteful, who is constantly doing one thing, loving us into life. We need to allow ourselves to be loved into life if we're going to become like the Father. You can only give away what you have inside. You have to allow yourself to be loved by the living God in order to become, to grow, and develop into the characteristics of the Father in this story. So, as you take a look at the characters in this parable, open up your mind, open up your heart, and hear the words, the powerful words that the living God always had for Jesus. And it's those same words that are spoken to us. And that is, you are my beloved son, you are my beloved daughter, in whom I am well pleased.